How's it going guys, Mike the Gaming Dad here and welcome back to the channel. So this is a request video from one of my followers, Leto85, who asked if I could make a video on how to make a legit crafting suit. So basically all the perks and boosts that maximise your enchanting, alchemy and smithing without using any in-game glitches, cheats, mods and so on. We're just outside the cave you leave with Ralph or Hadvar right at the start of the game and as you can see here I've absolutely no skills level whatsoever. The only level progression has been a tiny bit in lockpicking and a little bit in sneak. I was originally going to do this video from the point of building the suit, but then I thought, well I'll actually show you how to level the skills required to do this legitimately as well, with no glitches. I'll show you the stuff I've been looting, as we'll need a small amount of gold to get things like the carriages to major cities, but other than that I've mainly been hiding behind Ralph up to this point, oh and being naked. The skills we need to 100 are alchemy, speech, enchanting and smithing, and we need restoration to 70. If you've watched any of my previous videos and want to fast forward this straight to the suit, then skip forward to 1457. But if you want to watch me run around Skyrim naked, then get comfortable. Sorry if my voice sounds weird by the way, I've been bouncing from illness to illness recently, which is why this video has taken so long to release. I was ready to finish off the audio last Friday, but I haven't been well enough to record anything, which sucked, but anyway. Most of this little run into Riverhood I tend to keep the same. Is there anywhere else you go first? Heading over the river to grab the flawless emerald. And now down to Riverwood. And first we're going to get Feindel as a follower yeah, as I'm going to try my best to stay completely naked for as long as possible and not use any combat at all. Just for the fun of it I guess. So we basically need a bodyguard. Sell the looted stuff to the blacksmith first. And then to the shopkeeper where we can give Feindel's letter to Camilla. Now return to Feindel and get the first bodyguard that will accompany us on our travels. Now en route to Whiterun, grab yourself all the more Tapanilla mushrooms you can find. There's actually a lot more on the other side of Riverwood as well. We'll need 20 of these in total. When you get to Whiterun, speak to the coachman and get a lift to Riften. We'll and then from here you just want to head north, down this hill past the lookout towers. Once you get past there, keep a lookout for the fallen birch trees and birch stumps and pick up the scaly foliota mushrooms. We need 12 of these in total. But don't worry if you can't find 12 just yet, as these are harder to find, I think. Keep heading north up to East March, and then start collecting the Creep Cluster plant. We'll also need 12 of these, and you should be able to find 12 in this area. There's a lot of these around, and sometimes you'll find them nearby one another. So we've now arrived in Windhelm, and just to show you here, I've got the 12 Creep Cluster needed. I've got 19 more Atapanella and 5 Scaly Foliota, which is alright as we'll grow more soon. Now let's take the coach back to Whiterun. Once back in Whiterun, turn west and do your best Forest Gump impression. All the way to Golden Hills Plantation. Now this ghost is going to attack us, which should be interesting as I've absolutely no weapons. Hopefully Feindel kills it. Or shoots me in the back of the head with an arrow. Brilliant. Cheers Feindel. I best deal with this myself. Okay, that was the weirdest kill come I think I've ever seen. Anyway, this will start the quest, the unquiet dead. Naked! Naked, naked, naked! Thanks a lot! Here, take this, for all your hard work. Have the key to our house, naked man. Now we own the plantation, the first thing we want to do is build the extra planting spots, which is this piece, exterior decoration. You can chop the wood on site using the axe. There is also a stone quarry spot, but you'll need to grab a pickaxe for this, as I couldn't find one on site. And now we have the extra space to do some planting. So the first thing I'm going to do is plant one more Atapanella and two Scaly Foliota, as currently we don't have the number required. One more Atapanella yields three, and two Scaly Foliota will yield ten. So this will get us to the amount we need. Head inside the house and wait 24 hours, and then head outside and pick the ingredients. And now we've got 21 more Atapanella and 13 Scaly Foliota, which is enough. Now clear the planter and then plant 20 more as 12 Scaly Foliota and 12 Creep Cluster. And then every time you collect your ingredients, which will be one day at the start and then three days after that if you don't clear and restart, you'll get 60 of each ingredient every time. Do this 7 times in total until you have 420 of each as shown here. And then sleep in the bed to get the well rested bonus which will level skills 10% faster. 
And now using the alchemy station downstairs, turn these three ingredients into potions until you level up one level at a time. You want to put perk points into alchemist, then alchemist, then physician, then alchemist, then benefactor, then alchemist, and then alchemist, and then up to level 100. And then once complete, you can fill up the rest of the skill tree, taking all perks. Congratulations, you're now a master potion maker. Still naked though. I've got one perk point left, so I'm going to chuck this into speech as we'll tackle that next. Where do you want to go? Head back to Wyron and this time take the coach to Dawnstar. This one suggests donning some apparel. From here, talk to Madresi of the Khajiit caravans. Now sell her all of the expensive potions we've made. I did deliberate whether to include this method, but it's technically not a glitch, seeing as the chest is actually in the game. But if you haven't seen this before, at the other end of Dawnstar, hidden in these trees, is Madrace's inventory chest. So I'm going to take out of here any enchanted item for disenchanting later, plus any salt gems, as these will be useful as well. And then take all your potions back, sell them, take them back, and so on until level 100 speech. Once done, fill up the left side of the skill tree all the way to Master Trader like so. What's My the Lord, meaning of this please. interruption? This no Jarl Balgruf is not receiving visitors. Jarl Balgruf is not expecting any naked visitors. You sought me out on your own initiative. You've done White Run a service. What is going on here? Here, take this as a small token of my esteem. Now that's over, buy any filled soul gems from Farangar and sell him some of the potions. Ready to go on another adventure, Feindel? We're going to progress the story a little bit, so Forrest Gump your way through Bleak Falls Barrow. Oh feck, Feindel, deal with this please. Thank you. Come here, Arvel. Stand still so I can hit you. Damn my tiny arms, no reach whatsoever. Oh no, I forget you actually have a sword. Okay, run this way. Feindel, kill him please. Thank you. It's a lot easier if Feindel is the target and I can just stand behind and punch like crazy. I feel like the boss fight is going to be a problem though. I wonder how much damage I can do against this guy. Absolutely nothing at all. Brilliant. Okay, this could take a while. Feindel, would you mind? Okay, Feindel is down. Now this will definitely take a while. There we go. The Dragonstone is mine. Oh no, not the beacon. Ebony gauntlets, wow. Might wear these. Some quite good stuff from this chest. Probably because of my level already. Let's try these gauntlets on. A new hand touches the beacon. Listen. No, Here these look ridiculous. Look at the size of them. You can give the claw back to Lucan if you wish. I've stopped by to pick up some soul gems and to sell him a few potions. All right, then. Whoa, Camilla, down girl. You've been hearing about me and the Jarl, haven't you? Speaking of which, we'll go back to him later on. First, let's kill the first dragon. Look at us all. If one direction were from Skyrim. I feel like this is going to end badly. Ouch, that hurt. Okay, run away. Back to the Yarl for some weird encounters. And now whilst we are here, let's buy the house in Whiterun. We should have enough gold by now. This is so we have somewhere to store materials. We're also going to grab Lydia as she is a stronger follower and a better bodyguard than Feindel. Now with our new follower alongside us, first head back to the Standing Stones and swap to the Mage Stone. And then go back to the carriage and catch a ride to Marketh to go see Calcemo. What are you doing here? Why do you people always bother me? You idiot! If you deal with Nimi, I'll let you into both the excavation site and my Dwemer Museum. Okay, best do as he says. Got a bit of a temper, Calcemo. 
Now this giant spider would likely kill my naked self, so I'm going to hide behind Lydia and let her do a lot of the legwork. If she goes down, well, we'll cross that bridge if it comes to it. Nice work, Lydia. I think she only went down twice. On your way back to Calcemo, you might spot a few pieces of Dwemer metal on the floor. Start picking up any pieces that start with adjectives, so bent, large, solid, and so on. If you're too encumbered, then have Lydia carry it for you. You have my gratitude. As promised, is the key And then once you have told Calcemo that the spider is dead, you can pick up all the Dwemer metal around his workshop, which previously would have said steel. Again, get Lydia to carry this for you. Excellent. I think you'll be glad that you made this. Now invest 500 gold with Calcemo to permanently increase his gold to trade with by 500. Then buy any soul gems from him and sell him potions until he's out of gold. You can go into his museum and steal the Dwemer metal there if you want. Our sneak is so low currently that it'll be a bit of a minefield not getting caught, but it's a good source of Dwemer metal. So what we're going to do now is go back to Whiterun and drop off any Dwemer metal so we've got some space to carry more stuff. Sleep, and then disenchant any enchanted gear we have to make a start on levelling enchanting. Now go back to Farangar, invest gold, buy any filled soul gems from him again and then sell the potions. And then do the same with Belathor. Then go to Adrian the blacksmith and pick up any dwarven metal ingots, iron ingots, iron ore and leather strips. Sell some potions. And then finally go into the blacksmith and repeat the exercise. Return to your house to drop all your new materials off. Now go to Wylandria in Riften and buy the soul gems and sell potions. And then to Ballymun, the blacksmith, for ingots, ore and leather strips. And then finally to Bursi in the Pawn Prawn. And then you can go back to Calcemo in Markath and repeat this cycle. If you've watched my videos before, I use the attack, save and reload glitch to reset inventory to do this normally. But inventory resets in two game days anyway. So this cycle of travel between Markath, Whiterun and Riften is enough time to reset everyone each time you visit. Once you've sold through all your potions, go back to the standing stones and pick up the warrior stone. Then sleep for the well rested bonus, and this is all the stuff we ended up with by the end. With loads of soul gems to level enchanting, and loads of materials for iron daggers and crafting dwarven metal too. I don't know if this will be enough dwemer metal, we'll see. So smell all this down into ingots, do the iron ore as well, and now craft iron daggers up to smithing level 30. At this point we can pick up the Dwarven Smithing Perk from the skill tree. Now using the remaining ingots, craft Dwarven Bows. You can also level up the bows at a grindstone to boost smithing as well. So I fell about 100 bows short of level 100 so I had to go get some more. But now this is complete, pick up the Mage Stone once again. Sleep and now we want to enchant the daggers and bows. Normally what I do would be to go to the Fletcher and pick up a weapon with the Banishing Enchantment. But luckily I found a weapon with Paralyze. Banish is the best for leveling, but Paralyze is a close second. And Absorb Health is also pretty good too. Any of these will be good choices for leveling and enchanting. Hopefully you manage to find something with one of these on. We want to fill up the left and middle of the skill tree. I've run out of perk points for the last one, but we'll get some more soon. You know the drill by now. Make a mess of Farangar's room. Look at all these bows. Pick up the spell turn Lesser Undead from Farangar. And now travel up to Solitude and pick up an item with Fortify Restoration from Radiant Raiment. And then with level 100 enchanting we can put this enchantment on a ring, necklace, helmet and chest piece. Each enchantment should equal 25% so we can cast Restoration Magic for free when wearing all four pieces. Now go and join up with the College of Winterhold. In the midden underneath the college, find the lone Draugr and repeatedly cast Turn Lesser Undead on him. Do this all the way to level 70. The reason level 70 is important is at this level, Necromage becomes available. I'll get onto the importance of this later. So what I'm going to do is make Speech Legendary now. We don't need it anyway. And this will free up enough perks to get Necromage, the last perk in Enchanting and almost fill up the Smithing Skill Tree. Right, so that concludes the skills. Now for the fun part, making the suit.
So if you did skip forward and are just joining us now, to recap, we have a fully perked alchemy tree. Speech was at level 100, but we've made this legendary. Smithing is at level 100 with almost all the perks, and enchanting is also at 100 with the left and middle fully perked. And then finally, restoration we have taken to level 70 to unlock the necromage perk. So for the first stop on our journey to build a legit crafting suit is Mara's Eye Pond, which is just here on the map, southwest of Windhelm. Personally, I love this location and quest. Reading the journal on the floor starts the Dreams of the Dead quest, whereby you have to solve riddles in the style of Poltergeist. It was quite unnerving the first time I did this. If you want a full walkthrough of this quest, then check out my new home's guide. All we are here for this time is the Bloodworm Helm, which you can get about halfway through the riddles. And this is the bad boy on. Awesome helm. Now go to Falk Firebead in Solitude and ask about Wolf Skull Cave. This will start a three part quest. The first is the man who cried wolf. When you complete this and level up, you'll receive a note from Falk to come back to him to help again. This starts part two, the Wolf Queen Awakened. There are quite a few Draugr in this quest, plus vampires. So this might be where we finally need to put some armor on and use weapons. Sad I know. The vampires are actually a blessing though because we want our character to contract Sanguinaria Vampiris from one of them as shown here. Don't cure this. Defeat Patema at the end of the quest and then take her remains back to Steer in Solitude. When you return to the Blue Palace and speak to Falk, this will complete the quest. And I'll just show you here. We've contracted the disease which eventually leads to vampirism. We want this for now, this is integral to the build working as intended. After a short while you receive another letter, this time from Bolgia Bearclaw, asking for your help again in Solitude. You'll be tasked with fighting off a necromancer just south of Solitude, plus a few bone wolves. After you've defeated him, pick up the totem bone from his corpse, and give this to the caged bone wolf, who wasn't in the cage for me for some reason, but anyway, he's just chilling by the water. This will give you the bone wolf pet, whereby you receive the Bone Wolf's Revenge perk. Now head over to Windhelm Docks and ask for passage to Solstheim. What a weird trio we are, Naked Man, Lydia and a Bone Wolf. Once in Solstheim, head to Kjolborn Barrow. It isn't too far outside of the main settlement. Here speak to the really odd dark elf, Rallis. Give him the thousand gold to start an expensive four part quest. Basically what we'll be doing is waiting two to three days for a letter from him and each time more and more of the excavation is revealed, but more and more disasters keep happening. Drow will kill all the miners, and it keeps getting more and more expensive to fund, but progress on. The first time we enter we can get Azadil's boots of water walking. The second time the ring of necromancy. The third time the ring of arcana and the gauntlets of warding. And the fourth time the chess piece from this room with the riddle, plus the helm of vision down the spiral staircase. And right at the end, after defeating Azadil himself, we get the mask. With all the pieces collected and a rather large hole in our pocket where gold once was, head north to White Ridge Barrow. In here there will be another dragon priest, Dukan, but this isn't why we are here. In the same room as him and the word wall would be a black book, the cellar region. Read this to be transported into the horror of Apocrypha. Now I highly recommend bringing the candlelight spell so the darkness doesn't hurt you. I didn't, so basically I had to run between the lit parts, dodging any lurkers, which wasn't enjoyable. But at the end of this short level is our prize. Reading the book grants us a choice of three boosts, Seeker of Might, Sorcery and Shadows. We want Sorcery for now, which will make our enchantments 10% more powerful. Almost at the end guys. Now we need to find Resad of the Khajiit Caravans and ask him about the trouble he has been running into on the road. I feel like I've used this quest a lot recently in my guides. It's such a good quest, and free as well to download if you don't have AE. Take care of all four bandit camps and then return to Resad to complete the quest. He'll now have the rare Curios items and the ones we want from the caravans are Droog Wax, Gold Canner and Stormflower Petals. Now head to Angeline's Aromatics in Solitude and pick up an Enchanter's Elixir. If she doesn't have one, try one of the other alchemists. And then grab a ring and an amulet. If you don't have one, try one of the blacksmiths for gold or silver ore. I found some ore in Whiterun, and I'm going to craft this into a ring and necklace. 
I'm also going to make some braces and some helmets. Now, why have we been running around grabbing all this weird stuff and completing the most random collection of quests imaginable? Here is Tiny from my last video. Now Tiny isn't a vampire and he doesn't have the Seeker of Sorcery as shown here. Here are all the perks he's got currently. But he does have enchanting level 100 with all the same perks shown here. Now if he enchants Fortify Alchemy on an item, see here we get a 25% boost. Now let's show you Crafting Suit Man, who is a vampire and does have Seeker of Sorcery as shown here. Now if he enchants the exact same enchantment, we get a 27% boost. This is because Seeker of Sorcery is boosting this 2 percentage points. I don't know why it's not 2.5% and rounds up to 28 instead of down to 27, but this is what it does. Now I'll show you this enchanting elixir. See how the boost from this potion is 25%? Well look at what happens when we take it. We actually get a 31% boost. Why? And this is where Necromage and Vampirism synergize well. Necromage is a restoration perk that makes all spells more effective against undead. Specifically, it increases the magnitude by 25%. Now Vampirism actually makes the player undead, so this means that any spells and other effects that you use on yourself are augmented by Necromage. So what we actually get is a 25% increase to 25%, which equates to 31%. And if I was to take this potion now, we'd actually create items with a 31% boost to alchemy. So let's reload and continue stacking items, shall we? Remember the Bloodworm Helm we got first? Well this also increases the magnitude of all spells cast on undead, and this effect stacks with Necromage so the two together apply a multiplier of 1.56. Let's take our 25% enchanting elixir, and what we get now is a 39% increase, and if I was to try and craft an alchemy item now, we actually get a 33% boost to alchemy. We also picked up all of the Azadil armor set, and this has a weird boost. The boots are the only item that actually references it, but wear 4 pieces and get plus 10 enchanting. I'll just demonstrate this by equipping any 4 pieces. Now if you're a necromage vampire what you actually get is plus 12. I'm not sure why, it seems to just be the how the multiplier works. But just to show you what happens if you equip 5 pieces, no boost. And similarly, if you equip just 3 pieces you also get no boost, it has to be 4. Now because we need to be wearing the bloodworm helm, we can't actually equip Azadil's mask or the helm so that actually decides which pieces we need to wear. One of the rings, plus the gauntlets, boots and armour, and that's it. So let's equip those four, plus the bloodworm helm, and we will now take our potion to get the 39% boost. And what we now get due to the plus 12 enchanting from Azadil's armour is alchemy items that would boost by 35%. So this is basically the crafting suit. You aren't winning any points for style, let's be honest. Now there is one final effect which I wanted to include. Having the Bone Wolf follow you grants the Bone Wolf's revenge. Now there are conflicting reports of this effect online. Some say it does stack with Necromage of the Bloodworm Helm, some say it doesn't. I've tried this everywhere I can think of, and I can't seem to find another boost to enchanting. But I've left it in hoping one of you lovely people can clarify it once and for all in the comments for everyone. Does this stack as well, somehow, or not, and everyone can just ignore the Bone Wolf bit, but let me know. So now let's enchant our 4 pieces with 35% alchemy. Now a shout out to Super Mario 64 and VS, both commented on my recent videos highlighting that you don't need to combine two rare curious ingredients to get the boosted potion, just use one of the ingredients and a base ingredient, which is super helpful and I didn't know this so thank you. So what I'm going to do is grab a blue butterfly wing, quite a common ingredient, and wearing the alchemy equipment and combine this with stoneflower petals to make a powerful enchanting potion, 89%, which as I'm a necromage vampire will actually be a lot higher. Now you can go back to the black book by the way and switch to seeker of shadows for 10% boost to alchemy. I just think it's a faff to keep going back, but if you wanted to max out you would do this. So now you can just repeat this step as many times as you want really, seeker of sorcery, plus equip all your stuff and take the potion and now we can create equipment that boosts alchemy by 60% each. I'll just show you the necromage vampire effect here. The 35% equipment was actually boosted to 43% so I'll equip the 60% equipment and we actually get 75% nice. Now make another potion and this time its effect is 120% 
And now this 120% potion wearing our crafting suit actually gives us a 187% boost. Let's see how the effects of these boosts will keep driving it higher. It's basically like a watered down but legitimate resto glitch, but not a game breaking glitch that could ruin your save. As I say, you can keep repeating this if you want. What I'm going to do now is add smithing as well as alchemy to my equipment to get a 77% boost to both per item. Now let's equip all these new pieces and that 77% boost actually becomes a 96% boost per item. Nice. And now another enchanting potion would jump to 146%, so we could keep going higher if we wanted to. I'm also going to combine blister wart and gold cannon to make a 364% smithing potion. Now one final tip I have for you. Here is the smithing potion here. If I was to take this now, what this actually boosts to is 455%. Let's just reload the save here. When smithing, equip the Bloodworm Helm first, only the Bloodworm Helm, and then take the potion. And what we now get is a 568% increase because the Bloodworm Helm stacks on top. You can also switch to Seeker of Might as well if you wanted to. And that's my guide to creating a legitimate crafting suit in Skyrim. I hope I included all the boosts. Let me know if I've missed anything and I'll see you next time.